Praise God. Glory be to God. How are, how's everybody tonight? I started to make sure this thing would work, and I started a little early, so it's a little before seven. So, but that's okay. We can, we, we can just talk for a few minutes. Praise God. I just want to give a little bit of a, uh, a, a testimony. Some really good things have been happening. I know I, I'm excited that we see we're in the in the travel lodge, and uh, that's good. We get started in there. They had their first meeting on Sunday, and uh, that's great. So this is uh, Pathway Ministers Ministries Revival Center, and uh, you know it's. Uh, it's a uh, uh, exciting time we're living in, and uh, just with everything that's happening all around, uh, all the things that have been going on, uh, I, I'm just uh, getting more and more um, excited, and I just know that faith is building in people. I I see trust building in people. I've talking to people just this week, and. Uh, we met for lunch with uh, some of the businessmen in our city, and and uh, when we were talking with them, you know, they just they just feel like because they they're working with the business people, and uh, with what everything that's happening, uh, they really the finances have been affected a lot, and uh, so they've really been just trusting God with that, and uh, just the direction that God has been taking. Quite a few of them. It's just exciting to know, and um, I have a friend that's just working on some things with the health, and um, he's just. Uh, uh, I just things are starting to happen more and more, where God is showing him things and on how to operate in the health and and uh, because not all people believe in God, so there's a lot of people need health. And they need help with their health. And uh, he's been working with us for quite a while for the unsaved to get to get them some health. And uh, so it's uh, just interesting what the business people are going through right now. And also, I just I've been praying for some of the small businesses because they've really been affected. If you walk through some of the malls, quite a few of the stores have been closed because of this. And uh, uh, it's just a really affected a lot of small businesses, and uh, there's one friend of ours that, uh, or well, no, I shouldn't say a friend of acquaintance. Um, they've shut their business down, and uh, they just couldn't make it anymore. And the doors are locked, and because uh, just nobody coming around, and uh, so, and even this afternoon we I met with some people, and and uh, there's just so much fear. In those people and and they're not Christians they're business people but not Christians and those people are just fear there's so much of it is fear based and uh, that's so sad because you know when this first all started I I just really said Lord I've not been given a spirit of fear but of love power and a sound mind and that you know power I have power to say no to the enemy. And a sound mind, I start to think, when you have a sound mind, you start to think like Jesus thinks. And that's not a bad thing, I'll tell you. But a lot of people don't always agree with that. And uh, I know I've been, uh, my wife was was in a store and, and uh, she went to pay for something and this lady looked at her and says, you're not taking this serious, are you? And uh, she said, and this was a lady in the, in one of the groceries or the, yeah, grocery stores in the city here. And, and she said, you're not taking this serious. And my wife said, well, kind of stood back and, and, and cause this lady said, you stand back. Well, how is she going to pay for it? She has to step up to pay for it. And finally, this lady looks at her and says, I suppose you're one of those Bible believing Christians. <laughs> and, and Eva said, yeah. That's me, <laughs> you know, it, and it's just so different. When you have Jesus, 
the fear doesn't come. You know, and and we just don't need to allow that fear to come. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at some of the things tonight about that. And uh, so it's it's good. Praise God. So how's everybody else been out there? I see Kathy's online. Good to see you. Swift Current, how's things in Speedy Creek? <laughs> and uh, I see Sharon's come online. And we'll just keep talking here a little bit. I'll just till, wait for a couple more minutes before I start teaching. And uh, just because I did get on a little early today. I've been having trouble with my Wi-Fi. And I had to phone Shaw and they came and they were working on it. And because uh, my Wi-Fi wouldn't work in my house for for some reason, part time. And uh, so every time I try to get on Wi-Fi, it would it would start and then kick out. So I kept praying over it, believing. And uh, when I did that, uh, praise God, I went on it tonight and it just started right up. So glory to God. That's good. Praise his name. And uh, I just want another testimony. Um, I've been going out to Spiritwood for the last uh, couple months, and I will be for the next four months. I've, I'm helping a church out there. They, their pastor resigned a year ago, and they didn't have anybody. So uh, I've just I've felt in my heart, and I prayed about it, and I felt I needed to go out there and just help them every Sunday. So we drive out every Sunday, and it's a couple-hour drive, but that's great. We're just looking out, at, and every time we drive out, we just look at God's scenery, and it's just incredible. All the tree, uh, trees are starting to turn a little yellow and just the colors that are out there. And it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful drive Sunday morning. And uh, we really enjoy it. And there's a, a young lady there that uh, uh, is, this is her testimony. But um, she uh, was struggled with migraine headaches. And they would get so bad that sometimes she'd just have to pull the car over and she'd just sit there beside the road and hold on to her head and it was just a really a bad time and and uh, you know and she struggled with this and struggled with it for for quite a long quite a few years I guess and uh, so anyway after one of the meetings there I at, at Spiritwood I just said to her uh, or I said to the people there I said if you need prayer for something uh, just uh, let me know and I said, I know there's somebody here who struggles with migraines. The Lord showed it to me. And uh, she came to me after and she said, that's me. And so I said, well, I'm going to lay hands on you. And I'm going to pray. We're going to break that. And the, and it's going to no longer bother you. And uh, so uh, uh, and I laid hands on her and prayed over her and uh <laughs> and the power of God hit her, and down she went onto the floor. And you have to understand, this is a Methodist church, and uh, they don't see people getting slain in the spirit. They don't even see people laying hands on people. So I mean, we've just we're just getting going there, and um, we're excited because now people are 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 getting ready to receive, you know. And I, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But when we pray. We need to be ready to receive. And um, she, she was so ready that day. And I laid hands on her. And uh, this was actually when I spoke there almost a year ago now when this happened. And uh, when I laid hands on her, down she went on the floor. And, and people were looking at her. And I, I, I said to people there, I said, don't worry, she's okay. And, uh, and, and then... Uh, after about 10 minutes, while well, Eva went over and laid hands on her and, and, as she was laying there and prayed over her as well. And uh, then she got up and, and uh, she said, I'm free. And so I talked to her last Sunday. I said, How's, how have you had any migraines? And she said, no. She said, since that day when you prayed, they were broken off of me. And she said, in another month, it'll be a full year that I never, I haven't had a migraine. And so I just thought, what a testimony from that, just a total breakthrough. And, uh, but you know, that day when I prayed for her, I could just feel, 
she was expecting it. And I, and I wrote down the other day, you know, what, uh, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but when you pray, are you expecting? You know, when you pray, are you expecting the answer to your prayer? Well, what, what happens when, when you invite somebody to come over to your house? What, what do you do? You, you're expecting them to come for lunch tomorrow or supper. For, so let's say you invite them, come over tomorrow night for supper. And um, when you say that, then what, what do you do? You start to expect that they're coming, don't you? And then what do you do? You go to the house, you clean it up, you, uh, you know, you might uh, sweep the floor, you might uh, make sure there's no clothes laying around, you know, you, you, you get things ready and, uh, for them to come because you're expecting them to come. What about if you're having a baby? What do you do? You get the, the room ready for the baby, don't you? When you're expecting a baby, what do you, 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 you get all excited because we're going to have a baby. And you get that room ready and you get a new crib or you get an, uh, the old crib and you get it painted up and you get it uh, checked out and make sure everything is ready. And uh, you get, you know, some diapers, <laughs> you get some other things, you get ready to receive, you know, and I just thought to myself the other day, how many times do we pray, but we don't have our receive mode on? We're just, we just sometimes pray and it almost seems like empty words. But that's where I talk about, you know, I won't talk too much about it today, but next week I think I'm going to be talking on faith. And because that's one of the keys to the kingdom is walking in faith. And we need to get walking in faith. So praise God. So that's just, I'm um, just a, a good testimony of this young girl. She's probably about, I don't know, maybe 35 but she had such severe migraines that she couldn't even function. And God totally set her free. And, uh, you know, uh, but I, I knew that day when I went and laid hands on her, I knew she was expecting something. She was expecting it to change. And uh, I talked to her after and she said, I knew that it was going to change. I knew I was going to get it, you know, and, and that's that expectancy. And, uh, you know, so when somebody comes to pray for you, and if you go, you go to a meeting and, and you go up for prayer, you don't get your expectors out, get your catchers out. Lots of times when I start preaching, I say, get your catchers out, get ready. You know, you go to play ball, what do you do? You get a ball glove, don't you? You get ready to catch the ball. If you're going to play ball, you got to get a glove on because you're going to catch the ball. So get your catchers out, get ready to receive. You know, we need to do that and be ready, be expecting. And if you go on your, <laughs> you know, you go to play ball, you put a ball glove on your hand, what, you're expecting that ball to come to you once in that ball game, don't you? So, you know, you're, you're all ready for it. You're standing there, you got your ball glove on, you're ready for when that ball comes to you. You're going to catch it. Well, you know, when you pray, get ready. To receive get your catchers out get ready to receive and uh, you know pray when people come uh, when people pray are you expecting well praise God that's just a little side trip this this evening and uh, I think we'll get started here right away hi Monica and uh, uh, let's see who's there. Amy. Okay, good to see you. Vanessa, good to see you. All right. Well, we'll we'll get started here on on uh, what I'm going to teach on tonight, and I'm going to continue on. I've been teaching about the kingdom of God, and uh, that how we have received the keys to the kingdom, and so we're going to get we're going to start. And just go over a little bit of it, and then we're going to go into some of the things about the keys to the kingdom. So, Father, tonight, as we come before you, we thank you for your, your love. We thank you, Lord, that we, there is there's no fear in the perfect love of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, tonight we don't operate in fear. 
We don't operate in disappointment. We don't operate in unbelief, but we stand strong. And I just declare this evening, Lord, as we study your word, I just believe your word will not return void to, to any one of us, but it will go and do what it was set there to do. And I thank you, Lord, as we, as we study your word, it's going to come alive in each one of us. And I just thank you, Lord, tonight that everyone that's watching has got their catchers on. They've got their ball glove on. They're going to catch some of the word. They're going to catch all of the words that you have for each one of them. And so I just release that now. And I thank you, Lord. I just ask for your anointing and your presence and your power. Just as I speak the words that you want me to speak in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, like I said, we've been talking about the kingdom of God the last couple of weeks. And uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 31 says, But seek ye the kingdom of God, and all, that, all the things shall be added unto you. And it says, Do not fear, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Then in, in uh, Matthew chapter uh, 16, and it says, there that uh, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So he's given us keys and it, it, it says there, uh, I will, I will give you. Now that's, I will. And when I was meditating on this this afternoon, I said, God, that's your will. How many times have we said, Lord, I don't know for sure what your will is. But right here he's saying, my will, I will give you. Now he's, his will is to give you the keys, not one key, but there's many keys to the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And, uh, and he says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Um, I just uh, uh, think, you know, that we, he's given us a key. And, and we have, so what is a key? A key is authority. He's given a, if you have a key, you have an authority to go into that house or that building. You can take that key, put it in the lock, unlock it, and you can go in. That key is an authority for you to use and to use to, and to operate with, isn't it? And that's what he's saying here. I'm giving you some authority. Different authorities. Boy, I'll tell you, when, when we start to look at this, we find I have authority in so many areas that in my life. And uh, he gives us those keys of authority. To bind anything on earth. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And uh, I'm going to just look it up in my uh, my Passion Bible here for a minute. I just need to go there. Matthew chapter 16 and uh, verse... And verse 19, I'm going to start from verse 18 or 17. Jesus replied, you're a favored and privileged Simon, son of Jonah, for you didn't discover this on your own, but my father in heaven has supernaturally revealed it to you. And he was talking about who did you, he went to the disciples and he said, who do you say that I am? And uh, some said this prophet, some said that prophet, but Peter said, he said, you are the Christ, you are the anointed one, the son of the living God. And uh, when, when he said that, Jesus said, you, you didn't discover that on your own, but your father in heaven supernaturally revealed it to you. You know, and, and that's how the word of God, he wants to supernaturally reveal the word of God to us. Revelation knowledge is another word you could use there. He, he gave Peter a revelation of his word. Peter couldn't figure it out on his own. And there's a lot of things we can't figure out on our own. But when we listen to the Spirit of God in us, we get a revelation. And then it says, and, I, and uh, Peter, on this stone of this truth of whom I am, 
I will be the I will be the bedrock foundation on which I will build my church, my legislative assembly. Now that almost sounds political, doesn't it? Well, there is some there that is part of it. And um, my legislative assembly and the power of death will not be able to overpower it. Hallelujah. Power of death. What's that? That separation from God. It's not going to be able to overpower you. Praise God. He will give you a revelation that you will never, ever, when you accept him as Lord and Savior of your life, he will give you a revelation of who you are. You are now the righteousness of God. You, Romans 5, 17 says that you became the righteousness of God. And, and, and that righteousness is a gift. It says there in Romans 5, 17, that it's a gift of righteousness that you received. And that word right standing is right standing with God. That's what happened to you when you got born again. You became in right standing with God. And, uh, and then he's given us, like we said, we saw here, he's given us the keys to the kingdom, the authority to operate in the kingdom of heaven. And, uh, and he says, and the power of death will not be able to overpower it. I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. Hallelujah. Now, he gives us authority to release that on earth, what's been released in heaven. Now, do you think there's any sickness in heaven? No. And he's given us the keys to the kingdom of heaven that releases total healing here on earth. Ooh, glory. What about prosperity? Do you think you're going to lack anything in heaven? I don't think so. Not, not the heaven I'm going to anyway. I believe that everything there, uh, I, I won't have a need there. It'll be all looked after. And he says, now you have authority to also have that happen here on earth. Boy, that's, that's almost too good to be true, isn't it? You have that authority to make that happen here on earth. Hallelujah. And if he's given you that authority, you have all the angels of heaven and the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus and the Father God all backing you up. Oh, hallelujah. They're all backing you up because Jesus took all authority away from the devil, didn't he? And now he's given us the keys to have that total victory over the evil one, just like he had. Praise God. And uh, hallelujah. It's just so, and he released every, uh, the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven. Hallelujah. And to release on earth that which is released in heaven. So we see that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's one of the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And he's given it to us. And we've been talking about that the last while. And then we went to, to uh, Mark 11. And we, we looked at that where we spoke to the mountain. He says, now you speak to your problem. And when you speak to it, you believe what you say, you will have what you say. You have authority. That's you take one of the keys and you speak to it. And uh, you can have what you say, but most people do that backwards and they say what they have. Hmm. That's the wrong way to pray. God, I have this. I have a flu. I have a cold. Lord, would you heal me? I have a cold. And, and, and so we speak to, our, to God about our cold or our flu. And that's not what he's saying. He says, you speak, to, you speak to the problem. You don't talk to the problem about God. You talk, or you don't talk to God about your problem. You talk to your problem about the God that's behind you. Hallelujah. And that's what, what so many people tell God about their mountain, but you are supposed to speak to your mountain. Hallelujah. Well, then we went, we went to uh, 
from Mark eleven twenty three, Psalms 103, verse 5, and it says there, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. But we just stop there for a minute. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Oh, what is your soul? That's the part where you think. That's where your thought life lies, in your soul. That's because we're made up of three things. Our spirit, that's when we got a brand new spirit when we got born again. Then we get a, we have had a soul and we still have that. And we have to renew our soul, our thinking to the word of God. That's why in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world. Not Don't be thinking like this world. Be not conformed to this world. But be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind, your thinking, that you may know what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So it's, it's, we got to renew our thinking. We got to start to think like him. And how do we start to do that? We start to get faith when we start believing on him. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Probably next week we're going to talk about faith. But this week we're just going to keep on our soul or thinking or, or what, what, what we meditate on. What, what do we put our, th what, what do we keep our thought life uh, busy with? And, uh, and so it says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my thinking. Bless the Lord, O my thoughts. And uh, then we went to, uh, uh, to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, and it says, Therefore the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Strongholds. What's a stronghold? It's a way of thinking and feeling that has developed a life in each of us. And we're going to look at a few strongholds tonight. They might be depression. They might be fear. They might be reoccurring unbelief. They might be a bad temper. Or maybe it's an unspe uh, unteachable spirit. We're, we're going to look at that. And uh, But those are strongholds. And, these, and he says, but, but God, the warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down these strongholds. These things that have held us back. These uh, things where, where we have fear built up in us. And, uh, for, and in verse 5 it says, Cast down arguments and every high thing that itself exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So we're going to cast down all those thoughts that don't line up with the word of God. That's what it's saying. And bring every thought, every thought into captivity. You know, you can take captive your thoughts. You can. You can, you can take captive your thoughts. You know, those thoughts, and, and we're going to look at a bunch of them tonight. And uh, we can take captive, and it says, okay, I'm going to re read that whole verse again. Casting down ar arguments and every high thing every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity. Now it says every thought, not just a few of them. It, you are capable with the keys to the kingdom. You can bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay. What's, let's look at thoughts for a minute. Now I'm going to ask you something. Is a thought a sin? Hmm. I'm going to let you just think about that for a minute. Is a thought a sin? No. A thought isn't a sin. It's what you do with that thought that can either go one way or it can go the other way. And I, I, I just put down... You uh, hear some thoughts. Uh, you know, you can think, well, I'm getting sick. I'm getting sick. Everybody's seen around me is catching the flu. 
or this virus or different things and, and, and we start to think about that and what happens. And as we think about that, it gets worse and worse and worse. Or we can take that thought into captivity and say, no, I'm not going to think about that. I'm going to think about being healed. I'm going to think about Isaiah 53, where it says that by his stripes I am healed. I'm going to think about 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. I'm going to think about all the healing scriptures and says, Bless the Lord, O my thinking. Oh, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of his benefits, who heals all my diseases. Ah, I'm going to think on that. I'm going to think. One of my benefits is getting healed. One of the keys to my life is getting healed. And rather, and it says, and you go on and read first in, in Psalms 103, it, it says there that he forgives all my iniquities. That means he forgives all my sins and he heals all my diseases and he re takes my life from destruction. Oh, glory to God. These are all keys that he's given me. I can operate in health because he has taken my sickness and he took it to the cross so I didn't have to have it. And so praise God. And another one I, I, I'm going to talk about is, <laughs> there's a, uh, hallelujah. It's just like a thought comes in. And okay, when I went to church years ago, just as a little person, um, a little person, I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a bigger person now. <laughs> and Monica, watch it. Anyway, you know, when I went there, they, they just didn't really believe that everybody should be healed. They just believed that a lot of times that God was putting sickness on you to teach you something. And so they kept saying these things. And, and if you made a mistake or you, you did something wrong, then God was going to get you. And, um, you know, and, 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 I, and I grew up in, in that church. And, and a bless God, they did tell you about salvation. And they did tell you that God loved you. And I couldn't quite understand that one minute they said God loved me. And the next minute it said that God laid this on me. And, uh, and so anyway... I went along and I, I couldn't understand that because that, that was always confusing to me because one time they'd say, yeah, God loves you. He wants to do good to you. Next thing they say, well, he's teaching you something through this sickness. You have to bear this sickness because he's teaching you something, you know, and, and, uh, that got pretty strong. And, uh, and, it, and when I got into, a, a, when I gave my life back to the Lord, yeah, years ago, and uh, 1978, October 28th, at about 4.15 in the afternoon, I rededicated my life, and I made a commitment to the Lord that day. And uh, when I did, I found out that I was the righteousness of Christ, and that I was in right standing with Him. The minute I asked Him to come into my heart and to forgive me of my sins, and to, to, to just accept, and he accepted me just the way I was. And uh, I'll never forget that, that day. Um, I went to a, a, he was a pastor, but he was also a, a businessman. And uh, he told me, he asked me, he says, now, he says, I want you to write out all the things on a piece of paper, what, what you want him to forgive you of. And so I started writing down all those things, and, and I'm going boy, on and on and on. And, uh, and, and then I, at the bottom, he says, and even those things you can't even think about, that, you, that you're not even sure about. He says, write that at the bottom of that page. So I handed him that page, and, and, he, and he took it, and I thought, oh my goodness, he's going to read this. He's going to find out what kind of a turkey I was, what kind of a thief I was, what kind of a person I was, and he's going to see all these things that I'm asking Jesus to forgive me of, and I thought, man, if he reads all of that, I could go to jail for some of that, yeah. and, uh, but he took that piece of paper, and he said, now, he said, Les, he said, Jesus, you have asked him to forgive you of all these things on that paper, and I said, yes, I have, 
And he said, good. Now, he walked over to the fireplace and he lit that paper on fire and I watched it burn. And all of those things I wrote on there were disappeared as that paper totally burned up and there was nothing left of it. And he turned to me and he said, that's what happened to your sin. Oh, man, did that set me free. When I realized I was totally, totally forgiven. Man, I'll tell you that, that took, that broke that, that, uh, that old unteachable spirit where, where I was told all those things that God did this to me and God did that to me and God was teaching me through sickness and God was teaching me through this thing that happened to me and that thing. And when I stopped and thought about it, that happened to me because I did some stupid thing. It wasn't God that did that. Hallelujah. And I started to learn that I could stand and, and you know, it changed my unteachable spirit. Because before that, I could not understand. And I just said, no, God was doing this. God was doing that to me. But you know what? I had to overcome that unteachable spirit. And, and I had to, in place, put, get a teachable spirit. And so my thought life had to change, didn't it? I had to start to think differently. I had to start to think like, oh, he forgave me. Oh, he set me free. Oh, I am forgiven. I am now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have the grace of God with me. And it says, because in Ephesians it talks about, by grace you're saved through faith, not of yourself. It is a gift of God. God gave me a gift. And that's being born again. That's salvation. That's a gift from him. And I've been saved through grace not of myself, it is a gift saved through faith, saved by grace through faith, not of myself. It is a gift of God. Hallelujah. You know, God's grace is his ability in us to receive what he's done for us. And then we start to walk in faith. And faith, you know what? Faith is believing what God has already done. And I keep wanting to jump into faith today, but I, I'm going to wait, wait till next week. But, you know, faith, we, we, we keep, uh, well, we'll see what happens yet. But we, we just, you know, need to walk in faith. That's, faith is just simply believing what God has already done. Hallelujah. That's not hard. You know, faith, faith, a lot of people say, well, how do I know I have faith? Well, you can, you're using faith every day. And, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Ivan, he, he uses faith. And, and it doesn't, not just because I'm, I'm just using him as an example here. But, uh, you know, I've been teaching every Wednesday. And uh, he doesn't phone me Wednesday and say, are you going to really be teaching this Wednesday? He doesn't phone me Tuesday and say, are you really going to be teaching he doesn't phone me Wednesday morning and say, are you going to be teaching Wednesday morning? No, he's got faith in me that I'm going to be teaching Wednesday night. He doesn't phone me and say, are you really going to be doing that? Or, you know, or how many times do we, we, we have faith and we operate in faith. And it's just like our friends, you know, when they, they say, well, we're coming. We're going to meet you for coffee at 1030 tomorrow morning. And uh, you don't phone them at 830 in the morning and say, are you sure you're going to come? You have faith in them. You believe what they, they said. Yeah, we're coming. So you believe it. That's faith. That's just simple faith. And it's just the same. We just simply believe God when he says something. Praise God. Well, let's look at a couple other thoughts. You know, and that's why we really need to, uh, you know, uh, go through. And I kind of mentioned it already, but. A lot of people believe that God is teaching them through something that happens to them. You know, like sickness or poverty or different things that he, you know, people think, well, God's teaching me through this. And, uh, but you know, God teaches things through his word. That's the teacher. The teacher is his word, his written word. 
That's the best teacher. That's that's his his way of teaching each one of us. That's his what I call it a textbook. Uh, that's what he teaches in his textbook here. All of the things that we need to know are written in the Word of God. And he that's the best teacher we can have right there is the Word of God. And uh, he teaches us through that. And another way he teaches us is through our spirit. And as we grow, uh, we got that new spirit, but our thinking has still not been totally changed. But when we learn to listen to our spirit, now, you know how you go along and uh, and somebody says something and you hear that. You're sitting in a, in a different church, not ours, but you're sitting in a different church and, and somebody says, well, God was, will teach you through sickness. God will teach you through sickness. And what does your spirit do? It goes, hmm, that doesn't sound quite right. And you get a little, little nudge inside of you and you say, hmm, that's not right because that's not what the Word of God says, you know. And, and so you start to listen to your spirit man because your spirit man is the one that what you got when you got born again. And when we start to learn to listen to our spirit man that's inside of us and that he's there and uh, he will always give you that little check if you need to. And he, you know, he's that. And, and how does he come to you most of the time? Uh, through a little check in your in your spirit, you know, and and how about how many times does he come with a thought? Why can't your spirit man give you a thought? The devil can give you a thought. What? Yeah. You know, when when, when this person cut you off in the car, and what was your thought? Uh, Man, I'd like to give him the finger, or I'd like to, you know, give him a piece of our mind, and uh, and that's probably that's a problem with a lot of people. They've given away too many pieces of their mind. They haven't. Come, <laughs> I'm better careful here. But anyway, you, you know, when somebody cuts you off and 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 you get aggravated, and uh, you know, and you and and that thought will. And and what do you do with that thought? Now that thought, where did it come from? Probably the devil. But what happens is, by the time you get to where you're going, you've been thinking about that person for so much that he cut me off, he pulled out right in front of me, he didn't even look, we could have had a serious accident, and you go on and on and on and on. And what does that thought do? It starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you know the old saying, you can make a mountain out of a molehill? Well, that's what happens to a lot of Christians. They make a mountain out of a molehill. And then they got to go to Mark eleven twenty three and take authority over that mountain when they could have just spoke to it as a molehill. Hallelujah. But no, they got to build it, let it get so big that it's just about... And I've seen people that just get so upset over some little thing and they let it grow and grow and grow. It literally affects their health. It literally affects the way they act to people. It literally affects almost the things around them, doesn't it? Now, and, uh, you know, I, I had a guy cut me off the other day, and I thought to myself, okay, I can either get mad at him, or I can say, Lord, this person that just cut me off, Maybe they've having a hundred different problems. Maybe their mind is everywhere else. Maybe they just aren't paying attention. And so he cut me off. So big deal. I'll just slow down a little bit. It was a good thing it was me or it wasn't somebody else or they'd have probably smashed into him. So I just said, and you know, that thought, and I just said, Lord, just bless that person. And that was the end of the thought. It didn't go any further. I didn't make a mountain out of that thing. I just let it go. Now, I'll tell you what, a couple years ago, I probably wouldn't have. But I've just learned that, you know, thoughts are so powerful and so important that what I do with those thoughts, they can go one way 
or they can go the other way. And you know what? I have a key to decide which way that thought is going to go. Oh, hallelujah. I can decide. Hmm. We need to stop and think about that for a minute. I have been given a key of authority that I can stop a bad thought. I can stop something that's not right. I can stop a thought where it's it's unbelief. You know, uh, sometimes when unbelief starts to rise up, you know, and, say, and you get that thought when you pray for somebody and something and you don't see immediately something happen. And what, what is one of the first thoughts that comes to your mind? Hmm, I guess it didn't work this time. Hmm, then the thought comes to your mind that says, maybe it's because of something you did wrong. You ever get that thought? Maybe it's something that I did wrong. And where would that thought come from? The devil. Yeah. Now, Jesus might convict us of something that we did wrong, but he doesn't condemn us with it. And so we're not condemned with that thought. We might be convicted with some things, but not condemned. He doesn't condemn us. He convicts us. There's a big difference. And so, you know, we, we, we so many times think of, well, it's probably me. It's probably what I did wrong. It's pro you know, and <laughs> why does that thought come? Where did it come from? The devil. Why did it come? Because he got you with that before, didn't he? And he got you with that thought before, and when he gets you with that thought before, and, and, and you know, and if, if you let it build and let it get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you start to make a mountain out of that thought, and it just gets worse and worse and worse, and finally to the point where you just about throw your hands up and say, what now? And then you go to Jesus and ask him to forgive you, and he forgives you, and you go, ah, oh, sorry, Lord, I made a mountain out of that molehill again. Sorry, Lord, I repent. I am changing. I ask you, Lord, give me the help that I need to change. And when I do, you know what? Two weeks later, the devil comes with that same thought. Why? Because he got you last time, didn't he? But when you had victory over it, when that thought comes, what do you do with it this time? You say, uh-uh-uh-uh. No, no, devil. Not this time you're not getting me with that thought. No way. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. That um, I've been forgiven. I've been set free. I, I, it, it's been done. And you know what? You do that a couple times and don't, that thought quits coming to you. The devil says, oh, no, there's no use using that one on her anymore or on him. No use using that thought on him again because last time he slapped me in the ear with that and he walked all over me with that and I got beat up last time. And you know, you beat up the devil a few times and he doesn't come back with that same thought. Hallelujah. Because we have a key to God's kingdom and we can bind it and take authority over it and it has to bow its knee because we've got like I said, God is behind us, Jesus is behind us, the Holy Spirit is behind us, and the angels are behind us to make sure it'll work. So, praise God. Thoughts are so important. You know, worry and fear. There's two, you know, that thought comes, am I going to be afraid or am I going to walk in faith? Which one is it? Faith and fear. They're reciprocals. They're both a direction, but they're opposite directions. Hallelujah. They're both a direction, but they are opposite directions. One way is faith. The other way is fear. So when a thought comes to you about fear, what are you going to do? You're going to decide and use the keys to the kingdom and stop that thought of fear in its tracks. And in its place, you're going to put faith and you're going to find out some faith scriptures to, to release on that. 
And Father, and we thank the Lord as we do that. We have victory over it. Praise God. And uh, one other one is, is, you know, sometimes there's some unlovable people. And uh, sometimes it's, it's almost like you, you so dislike them or you hate them. And, uh, you know, I, I had someone that was just, you know, they they said a bunch of really bad things about me. And, and, uh, and I didn't like them very much. But I asked the Lord to forgive me about that. And, uh, but, you know, <laughs> and, I, and I struggled with it. And I said, Lord, I, I'm having trouble to forgiving them because what they said was not true. It was not accurate at all. And I did not do that. And they are accusing me of that. And they're telling different people that. And they're saying it to other people. And, and Lord, I, I, you know, I dislike that person. Uh, almost to the point not to hate them, but, you know, I severely dislike them. And I said, Lord, okay, I need your help here. I need to forgive that person, and, and I, I'm not going to take an offense. Father, I, I'm, I'm not taking an offense. I'm not going to be offended over this. And I had to say that several times, and I kept saying, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I'm not being offended. I'm not taking offense. Help me with this. And he did. He helped me, and I forgave that person. And, and uh, you know what? <laughs> it wasn't three days later, and and very seldom I saw that person. Very so I'd maybe see him once or twice a year, and uh, but three days later, who did I see walking through the mall? That person. And right there, I had an opportunity. Which way was I going to let my thought go? Was I going to go back on the old thing? Or was I going to go on what I had agreed with God about? And I had asked Lord to forgive me. But isn't it interesting how if I've never seen that guy for, for I don't know, maybe once or twice a year, here just three days after I totally forgave him, that here, who do I see? I see him walking in the mall. Now, wouldn't that be just like the devil? Just to try and bring something up. Oh, yeah, all he's got to do is see him. And once he sees him, all of that old stuff's going to come back. and he's gonna... But you know what? I had a choice which way my thought life was going to go. And thank the Lord he helped me. And it was a little bit of a struggle. And I just, and I, and I didn't even talk to the person. Uh, they went, they were going the other way anyway. And I was going this way and 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 I'd have had to turn around and run after him to talk to him, and I didn't think it was necessary. I asked the Lord, "Do I need this?" And He said, "No, you don't need to. He do, he doesn't even think of you anymore." And I thought, oh, "Okay, so you know." But that thought—that's how important thoughts are. How we we have the keys to the kingdom, and and these thoughts, uh, they they become strongholds in our in our thinking. And feeling that develops a life of its own in a person. And that's where also, like I've seen a stronghold of depression. And uh, I've dealt with quite a few people that got really depressed. And that just becomes a stronghold. And that's where sometimes you just have to, you've got to take authority. You've got, you've got to cast down all those thoughts of that stronghold. And you cast them down. Uh, against the knowledge of God and and then and bring every thought you know into captivity to the obedience of Christ we need to take uh, a captive of those thoughts How, when you become captive what happens someone gets a hold of you if you if the if if you've done something wrong and the, and the police come and give you catch you they cap you are captive from them and uh, they put you in jail and 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 uh, you no longer can be out doing what you were doing and so that's the same thing with a thought when you take it captive and don't let it operate the way it wants to when you take it captive and you take it captive to the obedience of god and when you do that 
You are using the keys to the kingdom and you are standing against that thought and uh, of depression. And uh, I've seen people that get so depressed they can't talk to anybody, they can't do anything. Uh, they they sit at home in their own house and, and they can't function hardly. I, I've seen people just totally depressed. And, uh, you know, we have authority over that. But you know where it starts? In your thought life. That depression will start in your thought life. And, and it's just like, you know, you think, oh, I can't do that. I'll never be able to do that. What do they think? I can't do that. I'm no good. I'll never amount to anything. Look at me. Look, I have nothing. Oh, and you know what? You can talk with thoughts and when you start to take the thought and you start to speak it and a lot of times you not only speak it to yourself but you also speak it to other people but when you speak it to yourself you know what happens faith comes by hearing i wasn't going to teach on faith but we will tomorrow next wednesday but faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But faith also comes by hearing and hearing when you speak your thoughts out. Hallelujah. When you speak out those thoughts of depression. Oh, I'm no good. Oh, I am I will never amount to anything. Oh, things will this was a good things will never change. How many times have I heard people say that? Ah, oh, this has been on for so long already. It'll never change. I'll be the same here. I never amount to anything. And pretty soon you've talked to yourself. And, you, and you, when you talk to yourself like that, what happens? Faith starts to grow in that. And then you start to really, really believe it. And, you know, that's where people end up believing a lie. Right? Because God never said you were a loser. You've been made in his image. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yea, though I walk through a valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Glory to God. You know, uh, but we talk ourselves into depression. We talk ourselves into fear. We talk ourselves into this unbelief. We talk ourselves into it, and it starts with a thought. And that's why it says here in his word, Take every thought captive according to God's word. So if it doesn't line up with God's word, let it go. Don't hold on to it. Don't hold it captive. Don't, don't, don't hold it uh, and, and, and keep on speaking it. Keep on saying it. Let it go. And, and you know, that's where our thought life is so important. What we do with our thoughts, you know, and, and it's, it's just, but that's what, what, um, you know, uh, when I was thinking about this too, this afternoon and praying, I said, Lord, you know how many people take a thought and they have victory over it or they, they, they've had a, t a struggle with it and then they find they have victory over it and then that thought life comes, that thought comes back to them in about a week. And when it comes back, what happens to a lot of people is they, they get under condemnation because they think, why did I think that thought again? Before it's even developed or even done anything, they'll say, why did I even think that thought again? And then they get under condemnation. They say, well, I guess, you know, it worked for a little while, but it won't work for long. And they go on and on about that. And, and you know, what, what happened? The devil got you last time with that, so he tried it again. And so when he tried it again, what did we do? Did we take it or did we stop it? And that's where we need to learn to take every thought captive. Hallelujah. Not let it control it. If, it's, if we take a, lot, a, a thought captive, we don't let it control us. Then, because it's stopped, it's, it's captive. It's been 
put into a place where it can't do anything. What do we do with, you know, when we take that thought captive? It can't keep on going negative like it was, like it did last time. Praise God. And, you know, but the devil tries, and, and so many times I've seen when he tries to repeat that same thought, and, and you know, and we get that thought, and, that, and, and nothing is, you know, it hasn't even developed one way or another. But what, what's the first couple things is, and then we get that thought. And this is what the devil does. He says, see, you got that thought again. And he says, he, you know, he, he gives it to you. And then he tries to tell you, see, you got it again. That's the way he works. He doesn't play fair. <laughs> you know, but... We have a keys to the kingdom of God and we have authority over our thought life. And as we take authority over it, we, we take, take it captive, then, praise God, we can cut down those strongholds and, uh, with our thoughts. So tonight, I just wanted us to realize that, you know, our thoughts are not a sin. It's what we do with that thought. That's what goes either, it goes into sin or it goes into victory. And, and I, I had a, f a friend that told me, he said, yeah, I thought, you know, and, and when I thought that, I thought, well, that's awful. I must be a terrible person. I guess I might as well just go ahead and do it, you know. And he just went and fell and praise God. God forgave him later on when he asked him to. And he repented and he changed and he had victory over it later on. But he said the first couple of times he said those thoughts, they totally had victory over me. And I had to just stand up and take those thoughts captive. Because, you know, we let those thoughts grow. Oh, hallelujah. So, you know, the Bible says, I wish above all, things that you would prosper and be in good health as your thoughts prosper. Hmm. Third John 2 verse 1. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health as your soul. What was your soul? It's your thoughts. It's your thinking. It's your, we don't even get into meditation, meditating yet tonight, but you know, but it's your thoughts so it says, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health as your thoughts prosper. Ooh, isn't that a different way of looking at that scripture? You know, what, what, what do you think about your health? What do you think about your finances? What do you think about prosperity? What do you, and prosperity is not just money. It's, it's so many other things in your life, you know. But what do you, what do you think about that? You think, yeah, I have God's blessing. Or, yeah, I never seem to get ahead. Oh, man, what is this prosperity? I just never seem to get ahead. I never seem, uh, you know what? And then here comes the offering plate down. The, and, and I'm looking at that offering plate. And what are my thoughts when I see that offering plate? My thought is, Malachi 3 says that I should give 10%. Of my finances, but I'm a I I don't have any extra, you know. God didn't ask you to give ex from your extra; He God asked you to give from what you had. Thank you, Jesus. But you know what? We look at that offering plate, and it's coming down the aisle there, and and what's my thoughts about that offering plate? What am I thinking as it's coming down there? Ooh. They are saying that God wants to bless me. Well, yeah, but, you know, I put money in there last week and I, I didn't get a blessing right away. And, uh, you know, what are my thoughts when that offering plate comes down the aisle? <laughs> oh, am I stepping on a few toes tonight? Anyway, praise God. Thoughts are so powerful. Thoughts are so important. And it's so important and 
The, the thing about it is you have total authority over your thought life. Now, there's another word. I can't think of it just now, but it, it, it also talks about your thought life in fantasy. And there's a lot of problems with fantasy and where the word fantasy actually comes. Well, we're not going to get into that tonight, but you know, your thought life. What does what your thought life do? Where do you allow it to go? Because you can stop it. You can change it. It's, it's, that's the, that's the, the, the wonderful thing about God. He gave us all a free will. And he said he would help us if we just asked him and allowed him to. But there's a lot of times we just get under we, we, we get a thought and we get condemned by it and then we just let it go and then we think, well, I'm already thinking this. I might as well just keep on now, you know. Or we can stop and say, nope, that's it. I'm stopping this thought. I'm stopping it. I'm taking authority over it. I have a key to the kingdoms of heaven and I am taking that authority and I'm stopping that my thought life now. I am going to direct where my thoughts go. I'm not allowing the devil to direct where my thoughts go. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We can get into pornography and all kinds of things like that. We have authority to control our thought life. Now, this is probably, you know, people don't want to talk about this, but it is so true. It is something that is so rampant all over the place. And we have authority over our thought life. And we can take it captive or we can allow it to take off like a 747 in whichever direction we allow it to go. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hmm. I have given you all authority. You have a key for every thought that comes into your mind. And you can open the door or you can lock the door with the authority I've given you. Thank you, Jesus. I never thought of it that way. I can, I can also lock the door. I got the key, I can lock the door and it can't come in. Ooh, hallelujah. When I take it captive, I lock the door. It's not coming in anymore. And when I take out that key and it's a thought about, I can do all things in Christ and it strengthens me and I open that door and Jesus says, yes, I'm behind you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yes, I'm behind you. I will help you. Holy Spirit has come to live inside you. He will help you. He will direct you. He will help you in the ways to go. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise God. Keep a hasa, keep a hasa, keep a hasa, tan motolo lo motone he te de me shoka pohonde. Kula manet nini pinana nano ne he te. Stand firm, stand firm, stand firm. Don't doubt, but stand on my word and stand on my faith. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, Father, I just bless you tonight. I thank you, Lord, everyone that's listening. I thank you, Lord, that you will help us with our thought life. You will help us with our thought life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I just pray for each person listening that when they get a thought that they will know which way to go, whether to, to follow the devil or to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. And so today, Lord, each person that's listening, I thank you for them. I want to bless them. 
I want to encourage them. I want to lift them up because I know that they can all walk, walk in total victory and they can take authority over those negative thoughts, turn the key and stop them. And they can also open the door to the positive word of God. And so we thank you, Lord, tonight. Your word will not return void, but it'll go and do what you set it there to do. In the name of Jesus. Oh, amen. Well, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hmm, thank you, Jesus. I even learned something tonight. Praise God. My thoughts, I can take them captive. Glory to God. And I don't have to be condemned over a thought. Thank you, Jesus. I've been set free. Thank you, Lord. We've been set free. Oh, thank you, Lord. Free is a lot better than being under bondage. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, this is Pathway Ministries Revival Center in Saskatoon. And uh, if you'd like to, to donate or uh, help us financially, we'd appreciate that. Uh, but also, uh, you just go to our website, you can give on, online. But also, I just want to encourage you uh, that uh, if you have a prayer request, send it in on this website, and uh, we'll certainly pray for you, and we'll, we'll believe God. And the Word of God says, where two or more agree, it shall be done. So we'll set ourselves in agreement with you, and that... Uh, Praise God that we will pray with you and, and believe with you and we will see a victory. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage everybody tonight. God is good. He loves you. He has a special book written about you in Psalms 139 and he wants to fulfill everything in that book written about you that you can have it. And you can work in it and, and, and do what he's called you to do. So bless you tonight. And uh, I believe Sunday we'll be back in the Travelodge. Um, and uh, it, it was in the Galaxy Room. And I think you'll be there again next Sunday. So we just encourage you, let's get back to church. Let's get back to church. Amen. Praise God. Looking forward to seeing you all. Bless you. Amen.